Okay, um, good evening everyone. Um, my name is Virginia Fiume. I am the um, coordinator of uh, uh, the Citizens Movement Humans and I'm based in Brussels, where it's very cold and dark. Um, so tonight's meeting is very um, crowded of a lot of uh, citizens <laughs> uh, with a common interest, which is the um, uh, legalization of cannabis across the uh, European Union. And as a citizens movement, we decided to host this meeting to discuss something that mainly emerged out of two initiatives. On one side, uh, the um, referendum uh, campaign for, I mean, the campaign for holding a referendum in Italy uh, for cannabis legalization. Uh, a few members of our team were part of that campaign over the summer, uh, which reached uh, over 60, 600,000 signatures, which is above the threshold that is needed in Italy to hold a, uh, such a referendum. And also for the collaboration of some of our friends and members with ECAN, which is the network led by, in particular, uh, Katia Kowalski, uh, which started recently to connect at a European level to connect activists across the EU for, the, for this purpose. Um, as humans, uh, we, mm, pa being part of the ECAN network, uh, we launched the, um, the idea of, uh, given the trends around cannabis legalization in some countries and uh, things that hold back this process in other <laughs> EU countries, uh, to discuss together the possibility to activate an instrument of participatory democracy that is the European Citizen Initiative, which potentially can offer for all the national struggles represented here tonight, an umbrella to create uh, a reform at a EU level on one side, but also um, um, a pan-European approach uh, to, to, to this issue that is related not only to individual freedoms, but also on the functioning of the judiciary systems across the EU and a lot of issues that all of you as um, everyday activists on this are fully aware of. Um, the purpose of tonight's meeting is double-folded. On one side, to go into the specificity, specificity uh, of a um, proposal at a EU level for a European citizen initiative, uh, a bit of an overview of what is and what it means a European citizen initiative, but also to present to you uh, the context where we think uh, uh, such an initiative could be launched. Uh, in particular, we are working on a um, citizens' congress in Wolves to be held, to be held in Warsaw uh, on the 11th and 12th of March uh, 2022. Uh, the title of this appointment is uh, Citizens for Freedom, Ecology and Democracy. And the goal is to bring European citizens in Warsaw, which, which is at the center of a lot of issues within the European Union. And uh, we would like to use this opportunity also to give the much, as much visibility as possible uh, to initiatives around the legalization of cannabis. So um, I think to start, uh, uh, we have prepared a couple of uh, introductions on our side. On one side, Marco Cappato, who is uh, one of the most uh, active activists uh, on, this, uh, on this matter and also the founder and president of Humans to contextualize uh, politically why this could be a good moment for a collective action on this and why the Warsaw uh, milestone can be something to be taken into account collectively. And then Lorenzo Mineo uh, will present the, what could be the proposal for a European citizen initiative. Uh, then the idea is to open up the table for, uh, uh, for a conversation and see the different perspectives uh, that are here tonight, but not only perspective, but also the feasibility uh, of, uh, of such a commitment, which is a European citizen initiative. For those of you who don't know, um, the European citizen initiative is the official instrument of uh, participatory democracy provided by the European Union treaties. Uh, basically, it allows a citizens' committee constituted by seven citizens to, uh, one second, I mute, Elena, uh, to draft.
draft a proposal for the European Commission on matters that are competencies of the European Commission, and then Lorenzo will explain this in the context of cannabis. And uh, once a proposal is accepted by the EU Commission, there is 12 months time to collect 1 million signatures digitally and physically across the EU member states uh, to be valid and then to be audited by the EU Commission and the European Parliament, a certain number of signatures needs to be collected in at least seven EU member states. Uh, and once this process is concluded, uh, an official audition with a follow-up uh, is obligatory for the EU Commission and also the same at the European Parliament level. Um, it's very important to be mindful that uh, uh, it's not a binding proposal what is the output of a, of a European citizen initiative, but we believe that uh, uh, if a group like the one represented here tonight um, is able to associate the signature of co collection of signatures, a strong joint uh, set of actions, uh, we can really push the, the issue on the agenda of the EU institutions. And um, I will share in a minute a document that maybe some of you already seen that shows the different thresholds of signatures that be, needs to be reached in the different countries, uh, which can help us to identify where we do have a presence, either physical or with strong networks of digital contacts that can be transformed into signatures. Um, we discussed this also with Marco Perduca, and uh, uh, he mentioned a couple of important de deadlines. And one of these, for example, is the 20th of April, which is the Marijuana Day, or I don't know the official name, but uh, potentially if we organize uh, our communication, our actions and our uh, networks in an efficiently enough way, uh, it's not impossible to reach this number of signatures on a topic like the cannabis legalization. Um, I will leave the floor to Marco Cappato for contextualizing uh, uh, the, the meeting of tonight and then Lorenzo Mineo to go through the proposal for the European Citizen Initiative and then maybe Katia, uh, you can be ready next <laughs> since you are connecting ACAN and maybe you can tell us something about what drove your interest and uh, these networks. Uh, Thank you. Bye, Marco. Thank you, Virginia. Well, I, I just think that uh, many things are moving uh, around uh, drug policy and cannabis policy. And uh, the last important news, of course, is what could change in Germany after the uh, creation of the new government. In Italy, we already collected uh, more than 600,000 signatures on a referendum proposal. And things are moving uh, around the world. So I think it's very important that you, the European Union um, would not uh, become a, an obstacle for this, uh, uh, well, pro-legalization or at least pro-decriminalization uh, trend. And the risk of the obstacle in the, is in the uh, justice and police cooperation, uh, because uh, at an international level, uh, countries could argue and international institutions could argue well, if you legalize or if you decriminalize, you um, put, uh, you create problems uh, with our, uh, let's say, uh, network and uh, cooperation, international cooperation activity in, uh, um, in uh, prohibitionist policies. So um, on the other side, looking at, at, at in a positive way, uh, dealing with this issue at the European level could accelerate national reforms on legalization. And to launch it in, in Warsaw, in Poland, at the heart, uh, a country which is at the heart of uh, uh, a nationalist, uh, prohibitionist, uh, prohibitionist trend on many, many aspects, not just on drug policy, could have uh, uh, also uh, um, a symbolic uh, value of uh, trying to build through citizens an alternative to the coalition of uh, nationalist and prohibitionist, uh, prohibitionist uh, government 
on other issues. So um, I think that even if the tool does not carry um, mandatory power, as Virginia, uh, as Virginia reminded, is just uh, like uh, uh, consultative and uh, is a proposal is a non-binding proposal for the European Union. It could be the right tool to unite together different uh, political anti-prohibitionist fronts that we are already building and dealing with at the national level. Uh, that's it, basically. Thank you. Thank you, Marco. Um, just to add a bit of context, I want to say that what we are trying to organize in Warsaw specifically is not only on cannabis, uh, but is, as I said, freedom, ecology, and democracy. So there is going to be different uh, uh, activists uh, uh, from the EU on other issues. Uh, and so there is an element of, uh, as someone called it, intersectionality of freedoms uh, that goes from LGBTQ rights to sexual reproductive rights, uh, uh, end-of-life decisions and others. So uh, the idea is to have enough attention because it's a network of different activists on different matters that identify the European space as the space for immediate actions that need to be taken without waiting for the uh, national governments. So I leave the floor now to Lorenzo Mineo, who uh, can tell us a bit more of how cannabis fits into the context that Marco uh, described and on the specific uh, uh, text that is being drafted uh, for the past couple of years, actually. Okay, thank you, Virginia. I just shared with you all in the chat the text of the potential ECI. Um, you probably already read it, it was shared with many of you uh, some weeks ago and uh, most than a year ago with uh, a lot uh, of uh, the people that are connected today and uh, activists that contributed to drafting uh, this text. So just to ensure some uh, uh, people that were asking me, uh, this is the same text uh, on which we work together with uh, other Spanish and French activists uh, uh, almost uh, two years ago. Um, the focus of this uh, ECI is the framework uh, decision of uh, 2004, uh, which lays down a minimum provision uh, on, on element related on uh, drug uh, traffic, uh, traffic um, in particular, this, uh, um, this framework decision is incorporating uh, some UN tables uh, which are uh, including can cannabis between sustan substances be uh, for which there must be a minimum degree of uh, punishability, we should say, of persecution uh, according uh, to um, the EU uh, legislation. Uh, so to, uh, uh, to uh, exclude cannabis from this council framework decision, which is exactly the aim of the text of uh, uh, the ECI, this would mean to uh, legally uh, allow member states to legalize cannabis. The point here is exactly that Member states uh, who are legalizing, uh, such as Luxembourg, for example, they are doing these actually in infraction with the uh, EU law and international law since uh, uh, these tables uh, uh, are U United Nations tables. But the only way to, um, to address the issue of cannabis with an ECI uh, that, as you know, uh, needs a check from uh, the European Commission regarding uh, the competence of the EU on uh, the subject, on the issue, uh, is to address it through the EU judicial cooperation uh, in, in criminal matters. Uh, we had a lot of discussion before proposing this, this text. Uh, there was a previous version that was more focused on uh, legalization to cure of cannabis in Europe, of course, this couldn't be possible since uh, uh, the EU can't legalize uh, for every member state. It's not uh, into uh, the, its competence. So 
um, the only the only thing that we can say is to uh, exclude cannabis from the cancer frame of decision, which lays down minimum provision on the constitutional elements of criminal acts and penalty in the field of illicit drug trafficking. So this would mean that uh, um, activities related to uh, production, manufacturing, transit, distribution, cult cultivation, uh, possession, intentional personal use uh, of the plant and its derivatives could be allowed. So it wouldn't mean to legalize directly, but to uh, allow member state to legalize without being in infraction with the uh, European legislation. So this is the, the, the power, let's say, of this uh, potential ECI. Uh, from my point of view, apart from the technical uh, the technical issue related to this uh, uh, to this ECI, uh, the political messages of having one million citizens um, signing an ECI uh, on the um, let's say decriminalization of cannabis. Meanwhile, a lot of member states are considering legalization, such as Germany. Uh, in Italy, there will be a referendum uh, on that uh, in springtime. Uh, the political message is even uh, more important than the uh, technical effect uh, of these uh, of these ECI. But of course, we need to find a technical angle to promote uh, this initiative. And uh, as I said, the only one that we found for the moment is the one of EU judicial cooperation in, in criminal matters. So of course, this text is open to discussion uh, as it's always been uh, for the previous uh, uh, work that we did with other with, with other activists. Uh, most of you are even more expert than me on cannabis policies. If there is any suggestion, uh, you can all uh, uh, write comments and propose changes, modification in, uh, in uh, the, the text in the Google Doc. And also should be the good opportunity uh, to see if we want to concretely build uh, this uh, uh, this initiative, and uh, uh, so uh, if there is any suggestion, I'm uh, open to discuss with you. Thank you, Lorenzo. Uh, I say we open now the floor for um, comments, ideas, and the first round of table. Maybe starting with Katia, you can raise your hand with Zoom or write in the chat if you want to speak. Um, I think we should really try to focus more on the bigger picture than the technicality of the proposal. Uh, but of course, we can also get into that or collect questions and comments if need be. But I think it's, this round of table is more to understand uh, this pan-European approach, eventually what your organizations could do uh, to make this happen and if when you speak you can also specify in which member state you are present and where you potentially have connections it will also help us to have a bit of a initial overview of where we are uh, maybe in the next weeks we can also do a sort of an assessment more detailed um, but uh, Katia since you were one of the drivers for the fact that we are here tonight so uh, I'd say the floor is yours yeah, so yeah, happy to happy to do a quick introduction. So yeah, just to introduce myself to everyone. My name is Katja Kowalski and I work for the advocacy organization and think tank VaultFast, uh, which is based in the UK. Um, we're a think tank that promotes evidence-based drug policies. Um, and most of the work we do focuses around cannabis. So both recreational legalization and kind of working towards um, broader medical access as well. Um, so we're, ba we're based in the UK, but I am also a Czech citizen, um, so I can kind of come at it from this angle. And we launched um, ECAN, uh, which is a which is stands for the European uh, Cannabis Advocacy Network, um, just about a year ago. Um, and it's a network that essentially just promotes uh, communication and collaboration between um, cannabis advocates across Europe uh, to share updates and just kind of have a network of um a network of people that can communicate um, on this um, on this topic, and obviously with you guys getting in touch, it's kind of the perfect opportunity to um, 
uh, to, to kind of promote cannabis legalization at the EU level. Um, and so I'm looking at, I've got the document open um, with all the EU member states. So there's definitely ECAN members, um, some of which are actually on this call right now, um, which could definitely help with the citizens initiative. Obviously with myself being Czech, um, I can kind of help on that front. I do have a, um, uh, an ECAN member who runs a, um, a cannabis publication in the Czech Republic. So he could be useful there. Um, we've got presence um, from Spain, France, the Netherlands, um, Malta, Germany, Austria, Finland, Ireland, Portugal, Sweden. Um, yeah, so we've got quite a, um, oh, and Romania as well. So we've got quite quite a reach, which I could reach out to the, um, the advocates that I know there and see if they could kind of help um, help broaden out with this. Um, obviously I can't do it alone, but I do know some people that could, that could be of use to that. Um, so yeah, I guess that's a, that's a quick introduction. Um, obviously happy to answer any questions or go into more details as is necessary. Uh, maybe one question also to set the tone for next intervention is, uh, when you refer to a presence, you mean more like, uh, Organi established organizations or more informal network of activists or let's say, I don't know, uh, more institutional relationships with a uh, member of parliament or like uh, uh, just to understand if it's more an advocacy type of presence or, if, or lobby or if it's more like a act activist-based uh, groups, et cetera? It's a, little, it's a little bit of a mix. Um, there, there's definitely just individuals that are kind of individual advocates, activists from those countries, but then also um, kind of more kind of firmly, um, firmly established advocacy organizations. And through those advocacy organizations, I've got, you know, connections to, um, uh, to members of parliament, like for example, in Malta. Obviously Malta would be an interesting one as well right now, because they're kind of going through the process of um, possibly decriminalizing. Um, but if you want, I can then share um, a breakdown of the individuals that I know from those countries, um, some of which are obviously on this call. Um, but yeah, happy to kind of link yeah. you and get a bit more information. Yeah, or we can prepare together a sort of an assessment. Yeah, the... yeah, absolutely. I think obviously um, the more the better, but I think it's better to focus on the countries where there's a bit more of a um, a bit more of an opportunity. And as you said, with needing seven um, EU um, member states, I think we can kind of narrow it down um, through that. Exactly. And then some countries are easier than others. Um, anyone want, has any first reaction, comment? Raise your hands. <laughs> I mean, I guess from um, from some of the ECAN members that are on this call, um, I guess it would be great to hear their thoughts around kind of um, the feasibility of kind of getting getting signatures. Um, that might be a, a good place to start. Like I think it's 9,000 something from Ireland that's required. It is a lot. I can't guarantee we will get 9,000, but like I know a lot of formal and informal activists and groups that hopefully I'll be able to kind of rally the troops and get it highlighted. Um, I have no idea how many people would actually sign it and would be in favor of it. Like opinions on cannabis in Ireland are changing and they are changing for the better. It's just very slow. But hopefully if I can get a few people involved, I may be able to raise the profile of it and try and get the 9,000 signatures. Yeah, I mean, you've got quite a large network um, of kind of um, activisty, uh, advocacy based individuals in Ireland, uh, Natalie, and quite, quite yeah. a lot, like a large Twitter presence and following as well. Yeah, <laughs> I spend my life on Twitter giving out <laughs> and thing about cannabis and things that are wrong. But yeah, hopefully, like with everybody, like I have a good following online. I know a good other couple of activists that have a very large following as well. So I'm hoping it's achievable. I can't guarantee it, but. Yeah, I think Ireland would be um, a good shout. Obviously there's quite a, still quite like a strong kind of stigma and prohibitionist um, mindset kind of in Ireland generally. But I think with that, there's quite a large um, advocacy network of kind of, um, mm -hmm. uh, kind of 
the pro kind of cannabis brigade. So I think um, I think Ireland could be um, could be a good uh, potential country to to focus on. Uh, so Ireland is also considered one of the in the document you will see that I highlighted some countries in green, uh, not because it's the color of cannabis, but because uh, I applied two criteria. One is the countries where less than ten thousand signatures are needed. Yeah. So but, well, basically you can reach the threshold more easily. Uh, and then there are some other countries and Ireland, it's both actually. It's less number of signatures and less data that are needed to sign the European Citizen Initiative. Basically each member state requires different uh, data from the platform that is used. Ah. Uh, so in some cases, like for example in Austria, it's super difficult because you need the passport to sign the ECI. And this is really a pushback, basically, for people to sign because you also need to explain why ID details are required. Whilst in other countries, such as Belgium or Ireland, you don't need to include the ID. So for a normal citizen, it looks like a petition, but it has a democratic value in it. Um, so Ireland is considered an um, easy country in the Mm -hmm. uh, and I just want to add that uh, as humans, we had previous experience with another European citizen initiative on climate change, uh, and uh, it's not easy to collect one million signatures. That's why I think also another criteria is uh, access to the media. So how many journalists we can get involved, how, our ability to be featured in the media, and or something that proved successful in our previous experience is influencers. Uh, celebrities, uh, people with a broad audience uh, that maybe with one tweet can, or one Instagram story can really convince a lot of people, not necessarily being directly related to the issue, but with that type of audience. So I think uh, um, we should keep in mind this different type of uh, uh, engagement that can be done. So I see a comment from Gabi Kozal. Uh, I'm sure we can collect a lot of signatures from anchored members, but I have to leave the meeting now, so please keep me updated. Okay, and I guess anchored is spread across different states as well. So yeah, it's spread across Europe. Um, so that will that will, that would be a kind of a great reach. But yeah, I can um I can chat to Gabby um kind of privately and out of outside this meeting and um yeah chat about a strategy around that. Okay. Uh, I see Galaxy A50, and I don't know if it's Antonella Soldo, maybe, because she announced from Melio Legale that she could have joined, but not sure. Um, and um, then we've also, I'm just looking at the um, the spreadsheet with the kind of threshold rates. Um, I see that Finland's um, got a lower threshold rate as well. I know that Risto, um, who's from Finland, um, I, I don't know if um if he wants to comment on anything with that, but yeah, Finland could be a good country to to involve in the citizens initiative as well. Um, and Finland is another of the easy countries. Yeah, I'm just looking at the <laughs> green ones. <laughs> Bring us hope. <laughs> Uh, maybe a quick uh, survey around, uh, have you ever heard about the European Citizen Initiative before? Because this is one of the biggest challenges, so the fact that European citizens don't know about these instruments, so um, it's also good to know if you had been involved before, had been in contact before, had signed a European Citizen Initiative before, and things like that. I was look at, looking at over the summer about setting one up or trying to get a petition going on an EU level, but it was just such a large project. I didn't know where to look. I didn't know where to start. So when you mentioned you were starting, I was absolutely delighted because you have all the hard work done. <laughs> you have all the difficult work done. Yes, and we did it in the past. So, I mean, uh, we kind of, but it needs the commitment of at least seven groups in seven states, to be honest. Without that, we can't. I mean, we will never launch it by ourselves. So the purpose of the meeting is to be to be uh, reasonable on the resources and the commitment we can put into this. 
Uh, sorry, Virginia. I think what Virginia just said is, is very important. Um, I think we can also take some time for uh, each and any one of us uh, to check with their own organization and also with other organization in their own country um, to evaluate what would be really the potential of mobilization uh, in uh, their own country. Um, there is no point in, uh, there is no point in, uh, in, uh, in uh, I mean, in, in, in being um, uh, over, the, uh, over optimistic uh, or to underestimate the difficulty and the, of the endeavor and then to discover that uh, uh, we are not able to face uh, such, a, such a strong commitment or such a, such a hard goal. So uh, it's not really any, well, of course, if there are any improvement that you think that can be done on the text uh, and we can work on that. Um, uh, being uh, a suggestion, not a, a, a mandatory instrument, the text is important, of course, because it's the base of the mobilization, but then it would be a task for the Commission and for the Parliament to, uh, to go on uh, the real, uh, let's say, legislation. So is, it is not that important to be perfect uh, uh, with the text. It's more important to make the right assessment on the, the possibility of mobilization and, uh, around Europe, because uh, uh, it could also backfire uh, to, to launch an initiative and then not being able to reach the goal. Not very much. I'm, I'm not that worthy of... Uh, uh, no, nobody would say, ah, you see, you, can, you can't find one million people because, of course, everybody knows that the real obstacle here to, uh, is to let people know uh, the, the initiative. So, uh, of course, uh, around Europe, you have much more than one million people uh, in favor of cannabis legalization or decriminalization. That, that, that's clear. But uh, here again, so maybe um, if, uh, if uh, we need uh, a time to check, maybe to organize a specific meeting with the national organization of your own country, just to discuss the proposal, we can also attend the meeting with, uh, to assist with the uh, legal and organizational uh, um, element if, uh, if there are people who raise questions on the, on the instrument. But uh, so we, we can take the, the time that we need to make this decision. Um, our uh, goal would be to launch it in uh, at the beginning of March. But of course, from now to then, we should have uh, done the work of uh, preparing the network, which, which is crucial for the success of the initiative. Yeah, and I would say the criteria are relationship with the media, relationship with influencers and of all sorts, um, groups that are maybe not directly related to the issue but can be in favor, like uh, uh, groups. Um, the database of existing contacts is important. For example, in Italy, I'm pretty sure that with the work that we did with the digital signatures for the referendum, we could uh, reach the threshold and go above, so contribute significantly to, to their overall number. Um, but then if it's done in only one country, it doesn't make any difference. Uh, and also the, the, the political debate uh, uh, in your own country. So if it's very mature, that's an opportunity because people are already in favor. Or if it's super controversial, it can be another angle, but like the level of, uh, of the debate. If it's really starting, then maybe it's more difficult. And then also the resources of each organization, they can be in terms of communication, they can be in terms of money, but not communication. Uh, it can be, for example, something that we could do with a network like ours is to have uh, 
uh, the possibility to do social media advertising in different countries, uh, which an individual organization based in one member state cannot do. On the other side, doing social media on cannabis is tricky. Um, it can be the possibility to organize, I mean, COVID apart, uh, physical events or being invited at big events to collect the signatures. I mean, there are different types of engagement that can be uh, that can be provided. And of course, the European part, the political parties, like if political parties are uh, majority, minority, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, okay, Katia in the meantime is helping me to fill the, the document, so that's the issues. <laughs> Yeah, and I'll prepare. I can send over like um, a separate document because I think I'm only allowed to comment on this one um, just to break down of um, particular um, members of ECAN that I think would be quite useful. Um, yeah, as I noted um, in Finland, um, I know Cole Thomas quite well. Um, he's a member of the Finnish Greens who have just come out in, um, I think, the fir first um, kind of big party to come out in favor of cannabis legalization. So he's got a great network in Finland. Um, so yeah, would definitely be good to, to good to loop him in. I think he was going to come to this um, meeting, but wasn't sure if he was going to make it because he's got, um, I think, another meeting overran. But I can let him know kind of updates afterwards. Um. So I wanted to say, first of all, that I don't have access to that document. So if you could share it in the chat. Um, I just have access to the text, not to the Apparently, there is another document. Um, and um, I wanted to uh, su support what Marco said before. I totally agree. I think, indeed, it's very important to, 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 uh, to first um, ensure a broad, um, broad support from, uh, <clears throat> from the cannabis groups, cannabis communities in different countries. But uh, beyond cannabis communities as well, I think it's important to to have um, harm reduction, um, the harm reduction health sector supporting, hopefully as well the, the police and judges, obviously it would depend on in what countries, but there are some countries where um, it can be possible to have uh, these different stakeholders supporting the, the initiative. And I think that's definitely uh, absolutely critical because relying only on cannabis movements, which are usually tiny and, and um, well, not you know, not in the best uh, financial <laughs> resources situation, is not realistic in terms of collecting so many so many signatures. And unfortunately, we have a precedent of a, such an initiative that failed in twenty uh, something thirteen um, some time ago. So on th this one, the second one, must not fail by any. I mean, we can't leave even the smallest chance of this. Uh, new initiative failing. So indeed, gathering support from the cannabis communities, even beyond, I mean, I think targeting only on the, the minimum requirements, the seven countries and so on is not enough. We should um, aim for more just to ensure that we reach it, but also to ensure that, the, you know, we actually generate this debate on the continental level beyond the actual initiative per se, which as we know, is not the most powerful political tool, but the power comes from the fact that we generate this debate, and not only for cannabis, for the other initiative as well, but this one is maybe even more important because there has been less, relatively less debate on, on these drug-related questions. So yeah, ensuring broad support for cannabis group, broad support from uh, the health sector, and broad support from other any other possible sector that we can have, and that I think in, involves um, probably um, altering the text strategically to to sort of you know um, cover or at least include the um, agreed language of these groups or you know mentioned elements that might reassure these groups in you know in affirming their support and I think we hopefully by doing that properly strategically amending the text without changing the content but you know making it more easy to reach out to other groups that are not cannabis specific focused. Hopefully we can generate a, a positive domino effect among you know, civil society groups within within the different countries. And maybe if the Spanish sees that the French uh, police is uh, supporting the initiative, maybe the Spanish police groups might, you know, consider joining it. Maybe if they don't join, 
actually enter into the debate internally and and we would have reached this this goal of of uh, mainstreaming the debate so that's it I, I couldn't agree more with you uh kenzie i think that's um yeah really really necessary i think I think um, the kind of harm reduction focus and health-based approach and weaving that into the text um, is a really good idea and a way to get kind of non, the non-cannabis community a bit more on side. Um, so yeah, yeah, just wanted to say really, really good point. <laughs> um, two things, one with regard to the, so one that is the process of the European Union and the review mechanism. So basically, once we have a text, um, uh, we uh, there is a way to upload. We need the first, first uh, seven supporters, uh, and then basically in two months, the European Commission evaluates the text and give a reply and say if it's valid or not, if it's legit or not. Uh, in case it's not, they send it back, and we have the chance to review it. This is for the new regulation of the European Union. But I would like also to. Uh, say that uh, the communication that I mean we have different levels to play with the wording uh, and to intercept the attention of the uh, potential people interested in signing so we could I mean the text is the text uh, but the communication campaign is in our hands so somehow we can also have different ways to um, present uh, the proposal and get the support of different stakeholders to somehow shaping the, um, the, the campaign around that. Uh, the text is tricky because, as Lorenzo was mentioning, it's very difficult to find an angle. So um, the only risk is that we submit a text that is not considered legit because it's not uh, uh, part of the EU competencies on the matter. So that's the only delicate. Uh, uh, element, but uh, uh, for sure, Kenzie. Also, if you want to try to draft uh, what you have in mind, for example, and not uh, changing the existing, but as an alternative, uh, maybe this can also help to check with some uh, uh, experts if that uh, different approach would be would be valid eventually, uh, language wise. Okay. Is anyone here? I mean, I, I guess you are here because you are kind of in fear. Is anyone here like saying, no, this is not going to work. I will never spend a minute of my life into this or like uh, uh, biggest concern, uh, uh, downside of running such an initiative or. Can I, can I ask just one question? I am Laura from Canal Reporter. Hi, uh, my camera is not, not working. So. Um, I arrived late and sorry for that, um, but ca can anyone just please, Katya, maybe in just resume in one minute what we are really talking about because I didn't get the beginning, so I'm struggling to understand what exactly is. I was watching the document and I already saw that uh, we need um, signatures. Not sure if I got it right. So you, I'm sorry for asking you this, but if you could just make just a no, small no, insight. No problem, Laura. It's uh, part of the meeting. So uh, no Virginia, problem. sorry, <laughs> that's okay. Virginia, do you want to give um, a summary? I feel like you might be better placed than me, but happy to jump in, kind of where relevant, really. <laughs> Thank yeah. you so much. So, super quickly, uh, the idea is to discuss the opportunity to launch. Uh, uh, what is called the European Citizen Initiative, which is an official pe petitioning, let's call it, system to addressing the European uh, Commission and the European Parliament. And basically, with a basic text, which is the one that you have seen, uh, once the Commission considered that legit, we would have 12 months' time to collect uh, 1 million signatures in seven EU reaching a certain threshold in at least seven member states. Everything is above that, uh, it contributes to the one million. Uh, and the proposal that we are discussing is to use these weeks to understand if there is a solid network uh, to do this uh, and to potentially announce the launch or even launch it uh, around the 11th of 12th of March uh, in Poland, 
where our organization humans is organizing a uh, citizens congress for freedom democracy and uh, ecology uh, so basically to launch for, from Warsaw, among other things, the European Citizen Initiative for ca Cannabis Decriminalization in the European Union. Uh, so the collection of signatures is a bit complicated. This is important for you, Laura, to take into account because it's not just name, surname, and email address. It's based uh, through a system that's based on some requirements of the European Union, which based on the different member states requires different amount of data. So in some cases, it's just uh, email, uh, name, surname, and uh, address. In other cases, it requires the, a piece of ID to be added to the um, collection system. So it's not a quick signature for citizens. Uh, yes. In Portugal, if you make a, like a petition to the parliament, you need to, to put your ID name uh surname uh, the the complete name and uh, the id and the email and that's it and it's valid in the in the parliament um when when is the date that you uh, think you will have this uh, text ready to to announce it no no okay so the text is potential so the text that you see in the chat and that Lorenzo presented potentially is uh, ready to be registered at the European Commission and uh, approved by European Commission. It takes them two months to do this process. And after they say yes, we would have six months window opportunity to decide when we want to launch. So the clockwork of the 12 months starts based on what we decide. So potentially in March, we could announce it and launch it in June if we think it's like, I mean, mm, but of course, we don't want to wait 10 years <laughs> to, do, to do this. Um, the rule is not, so you mentioned the uh, rule in, in Portugal. For the European Citizen Initiative, each member state has its own rules for the European Citizen Initiative. I mean, we can go into more okay. details, but uh, uh, if you want to have a look, I'm going to share an example of an existing uh, uh, European citizen. Actually, it's always good for you to know that you can sign. European Citizen Initiative, so I can send you the official page of the European Union where you can find uh, okay. the, the ongoing one. So you can okay. help the communities that are currently collecting signatures and sign and okay. see for your countries which uh, documentation is required. Okay, so how does it work? Um, you, you mentioned that this, this text is uh, almost finished. This, this text that I, that I see that is in pink, uh, in purple, that uh, says the ECI European way for legal cannabis. It's this, talk, this text, right? Uh, I can see the text that I've seen, but I'm going to uh, reshare it. He still has comment, so I, I, I was just yeah, assuming yeah, that it's not comment. ready. It's Yeah, but it's yeah, not it's ready. Like what, yeah, yeah, what I mean is that um, it's been drafted uh, and more or less it, it ensures that uh, it's within the competencies of the European Commission. Uh, so we can't, you know, change completely and say legalize. I mean, it's a bit yeah, uh, yeah, on yeah, the line yeah, of... Do you have a time frame when you think that you will submit this text? Uh, first of all, we won't submit it if there is no actual text, so that's the first thing. So we need to ensure that uh, people here and other people might be on board. So it's not something that is happening for sure. It happens if a group okay. of us agrees to be on board. Uh, the, potentially, the idea was to be ready to announce it and or launch it around March. Uh, mm -hmm. because we have this appointment. We as humans, we are organizing this appointment in Warsaw that eventually will have all of you as guests as well because it's going to be a fight massive, but uh, potentially it will be March. Uh, but it's not written, I mean, we decide together in the moment. How we use the Warsaw opportunity also is something we decide together. Um, okay. Okay, so and the, on the other document where, where you have the threshold signatures, it's the signatures that you expect from each country. Is that correct? Not exactly. So basically that thresholds are defined by the European Commission. So out of the 1 million, you need to list that numbers in at least the seven member states. Um, oh, that's so the minimum you need to get. 
Exactly, in at least seven countries. So basically, okay. we could even reach the threshold. The, the, the one that you see in green are the countries where less signatures are needed or where less documents are required. So it's easier to reach the threshold. But in any case, we need to reach the one million. But reaching that number in at least seven places. Okay. But we, as a strategy, we can also decide, okay, let's address seven countries where we can reach the threshold because it's less than 10,000 citizens, mm -hmm. for example. But then we will need to do more work to reach the one million. So a combination of... Uh, okay. What, what does it mean also this presence of ECAN and other partners and some countries as yes, in green, in front? What does this mean? Uh, it's the countries that during the meeting, for example, Katia was saying that uh, they yeah. have a... It's basically just indicating which, um, where we've got kind of ECAN members present. So, you know, that could be a potential tactic and strategy to get them involved and where, um, basically where we've got kind of connections and links um, across Europe. Okay. If you want to add me in Portugal, I, I'm available to help in everything I can. Okay. Yeah, that would be fantastic. I think I mentioned Portugal, but yeah, I've only got common access, Virginia. So if you could... If you could add Laura um, and yes for Portugal, that'd be fantastic. Okay, so um, whenever you are ready to communicate, um, I will be more than happy to to write something about it on kind of reporter. Okay. Oh, brilliant. Um, yeah, brilliant. I Thanks. guess Virginia, what's kind of the next um, next steps or I guess actions off the back of this meeting? Yeah. So one second that I see Guido Silvestri from Volt Europa. Hi Guido, welcome. Uh, you've been in the air, so <laughs> please, uh, time for you, and then we try to see the next step. Yes, uh, can you hear me well? Perfectly. Okay, uh, so I try to be short. Sorry, I, I, I jump in late. Uh, just, just a quick update. Uh, we, we began a discussion within Volt Europe uh, to be sure that the uh, let's say the support to the initiative is full and, and well uh, well felt by all the organization. So we are discussing among a number of chapters. So there are two, uh, there are three scenarios. One is that we don't give priority to that, but I, I think it's very unlikely because a lot of chapters, national chapters uh, are, are uh, I mean, light initiatives a lot. And we are trying to understand if we shall go uh, as single chapters uh, or as Vault Europe as a whole. So uh, I, I'm sorry, of course, you understand the, the organization is, is complex. So we are going step by step, but uh, I would say in two, three weeks, we should, be, we should have a, a, a more clear uh, status of how we shall proceed. Uh, of course, Italy is well on board, but we would like to have more broad participation to that. Thank you, Guido. Uh, that's very helpful. Also, because we've been in contact with Volt for the previous uh, European Citizen Initiative, and I know that your decision-making process is rightfully quite complex. So the fact that you are already working on that, it's, uh, it's good because uh, it can I'll ensure that when we start it, we start, uh, there is already everything ready. Yes, we, we, so. we had a couple of, I mean, the issue has been discussed in the country council. We have a country council. And uh, so we registered the interest of uh, five countries already. So we are trying again to understand, and we, we had some meetings. So we, we, we try to understand if we are serious, if we give priority to, to that uh, before, before, telling you that we are on board. So we don't want to be on board and then be called on the initiative. Of course. Okay, so it's seven. And uh, so in terms of next step, my suggestion is that uh, uh, maybe Lorenzo and Kenzie can uh, work a bit on the um, potential amendment to the text to see yeah, how yeah. the text could be. Yeah. I think Kenzie was mainly proposing a method to discuss potential amendments uh, to the text with local groups and national groups. So it's something that we can do if this could enforce a bottom-up uh, approach and uh, strengthening the network. 
Okay, great. And secondly, maybe Katia and I can work on the assessment. Uh, maybe we can prepare, a, I can prepare a set of assessment questions uh, that helps to really get to numbers, uh, budget, uh, human resources, and sort of having an overview uh, that then we can circulate uh, within ACAN, but also with VOLT, with uh, all of us here tonight and, uh, and other networks and try to maybe aim for the uh, first half of January to have a clear idea of uh, what we, we would have available. Uh, Warsaw, beyond Warsaw, before Warsaw, after Warsaw, uh, and get a real uh, feasibility plan, basically, uh, on what this would mean. Um, so we will circulate something before Christmas uh, so that maybe we can have the Christmas holidays to work on the assessment and reconvene after that uh, with uh, more facts and numbers uh, approach, because ultimately it's a number <laughs> issue, uh, mainly. Um, okay. Yeah, that sounds great. If you want to share something with me, Virginia, I'm happy to um, kind of help help delegate that out um, and then come up with a plan off the back of that. Perfect. Uh, thanks for everyone for joining. And uh, now you have seen also the human's presentation for the Congress in Warsaw. So if you know activists involved in other freedom related issues, like uh, the one that we mentioned, like LGBT rights, uh, uh, sexual freedoms <laughs> and um, and other topics mentioned in the presentation, feel free to connect them with us because we're trying to do this on a bigger scale on other initiatives. So this will be very helpful. Thanks everyone. It was very interesting to have this uh, first round of uh, visibility. Yeah. Grazie. Ciao. Thank you. Ciao. 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 Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Take care. Ciao, Rizzo.